Okay, let's um, talk about the zero state response of our system. So this is the component of the total output that depends on the input. It doesn't depend on the initial conditions at all. Um, again, uh, just as for um, continuous time systems, um, if our discrete time system is linear and time invariant, uh, we can write the output y of n as being equal to the input convolved with the impulse response of the system. Now, for a discrete time system, uh, we are no longer integrating, but we're summing instead from minus infinity to infinity of x of m times h of n minus m. So this is discrete time convolution. Again, I'll typically write that more concisely like this. So let's talk about some discrete time convolution properties. You'll be using these quite frequently quite frequently in, in solving problems. Uh, discrete time convolution is commutative. So um, x of n involved with h of n is equal to h of n involved with x of n. So um, you know I can actually interchange uh, x and h in the summation above and I'll, I'll get exactly the same output. Um, the shifting property applies. So um, for example if x1 of n convolved with another sequence x2 of n gives me a third sequence c of n then it is true that if I shift either one of the sequences, say by m to the right, that will shift the output by the same amount. If I shifted the other sequence to the right, the output would be further shifted to the right. Okay. Um, Another important property is what happens when we convolve with uh, the impulse. We know that um, with an impulse as input to our system with impulse response H of n that uh, we would get h of n as output. Um, um, so it is true that x of n convolved with delta n is exactly equal to x of n. Okay. More generally, we're convolving with a shifted impulse. So convolving with delta n minus m this result, it results in a shifted version of the input. This is sometimes a convenient way to re represent a, a shifted input, is, is just uh, write it as the original input or the original signal convolved with an impulse. Okay. Um, let's talk about the, the width of uh, a convolution result. So. Here we've got to be a little careful uh, with what's meant by width in the discrete time world. So let's say we have a particular sequence w1 of n that has samples, let's say maybe 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, 
the width here would actually be 5 minus 2, or it would be uh, 3 samples and duration, or have a width of 3. The number of samples actually making up the sequence, though, as you can, you can see, is, is equal to 4. And so normally we talk about the length of a, of a finite duration discrete time sequence instead of its width. So um, the two are related. The length is always going to be the width plus 1. Or similarly, the width would be the length minus 1. Um, we have the same relationship between the, the widths as we do for continuous time uh, signals. So if x1 of n uh, has width w1 and x2 of n has width w2, then the width of the convolved result is equal to the sum of the widths of uh, the uh, two original pulses. Of course, th this would correspond to uh, a length of W1 plus 1 and a length of W2 plus 1. And the corresponding length of the output sequence then would be w1 plus w2 plus 1. This would be the length of, let me call it y. And if you compare the, the length relationship, we see that ly is actually l1 plus l2 minus 1. Right? When I add l1 plus l2, I'm going to get w1 plus w2 plus 2. But the length of the convolved result is actually w1 plus w2 plus 1, not plus 2. So I've got to subtract 1. So instead of the uh, relationship between the width of two pulses, um, we normally think of, again, as the number of samples in the sequence. Again, this has four samples. If we convolve with a, a sequence that has, is, has three samples, the result of that convolution would be 4 plus 3 minus 1, or 6 samples. So, again, you have to be a little careful, make sure you understand the distinction between um, width and length here. Um, we can simplify the convolution sum um, in the cases where we're dealing with a, a causal system. Um, the general form for convolution again is a sum from minus infinity to infinity of x of m times h of n minus m um, if h of n is causal, or rather h of n is the impulse response from a causal system, then we can show that the, this convolution result um, simplifies slightly. Um, we won't have any uh, samples here. Um, uh, H of n minus m would be equal to zero for all m gra values greater than n. So our the upper limit on our summation becomes from minus infinity to n of x of m, h of n minus m. Um, if x of n is a causal signal,
then this further simplifies. Remember, a causal signal is one that is non-zero only for positive values of its argument. So if, uh, in that case, uh, x of m will only be uh, non-zero for values of m greater than or equal to zero. So I can change the lower limit here to zero. And we can write our convolution summation like this. This is um, for the general case in which um, our system is causal and our input is also, also causal.